Let's take a look at the bond worksheet on the TI BA2 Plus calculator. Now this can be quite handy for calculating bond prices, yields, and particularly duration, which is a fairly tedious calculation. Now, if you're watching this video, you've probably done uh, bond pricing on the calculator using, for example, the time value of money worksheet or perhaps even the cash flow uh, worksheet. But this is handy because rather than the types of problems that you might normally get in a textbook that says, well, the bond matures in 10 years, so you know the number of periods is 10, or if the interest is paid semi-annually, then the number of uh, periods is 20. You may have a date, and the date may be, you know, January 2nd of 2010 is, your, is when you get the bond, and you may sell the bond on March 31st of, you know, 2015. And in this case, you don't have a round number to put in for N. So here, the bond worksheet comes in really handy. It's particularly handy for calculating duration, which is a relatively tedious calculation. So let me show you how to use this. Over here, I have some of the functions or some of the... Um, variables that you need to input. And let's take a look. Let's go through with the calculator. If you hit second and the nine key above the nine, it says bond. And you get the bond worksheet. Now, this is the settlement date. This is when you get the bond. And the default is 12-31-1990, December 31st, 1990. If you want to change it, you're supposed to put in the first two digits and then a dot, OK? Um, or a period here, and then the day in two digits, and then the last two digits digits of the year. Okay, so reminiscent of Y two before Y two K when we used to put in ninety instead of nineteen ninety. So let's say I wanted to change this to January second, two thousand and ten. I would put in one dot I could put an O one but it's not going to register the O. And then if I want January second it's O two and I want it to be two thousand and ten so one zero. So let's see if that works. Okay, we get January second, two thousand and ten. So you put in the month first and then the dot and then you put in the day and then the year, the last two digits of the year. And to go to the next piece of information, we scroll down here, the coupon. You'll put in a coupon as a percent, the coupon rate. So you might have 10% or, you know, 8%, 6%. We'll work through an example in a couple of minutes. You have the redemption date. So this is when the bond is redeemed. And you put it in the same way you put in the settlement date. With uh, let's, So let's say this is going to mature on March 31st of 2020. So that would be 3.3120, enter. And so we have the redemption date. And then you put in the redemption value. This is a percentage of the par value. So this is what you'll be receiving as the par value. 100 means you're getting 100%. So if it's a $1,000 maturity bond, you're going to get 1,000. If for some reason you're getting less or more, then you'll put in a different percentage. For example, you might have a bond that's callable, in which case maybe you get a premium when you redeem it, and you get a 5% premium, so you would put in 105. Here we have ACT. This is the actual or the actual day count method. So here it's going to use the actual day count, but you can change it to 360 day day count. Okay, we'll stay with the actual day count. All right, the down arrow key tells me I have two Y here, which means two coupons per year. But if I wanted to change it, and it tells you up here, it's set, and then it moves. So you hit second, 
enter second set and you can change it to one coupon per year. We'll leave it at two. You put in the yield and then you put in uh, the bonds price. You also, whoops, let me, let me scroll down here so we see what else we have. We have price, we have any accrued interest. You may have bonds that have accrued interest so they're only paying uh, semi-annual interest but you may be several months in and you've accrued some interest. And then if you go down one more, you get an error message because it couldn't calculate duration because we haven't put in any information yet. All right, so let's, let's take a look at an example here. Let's compute the price and duration of an 8% bond with settlement date of January 31st, 2015 and redemption date of January 31st, 2025. And let's assume that the yield is nine and a quarter percent. So I've made this example, so it's a 10-year bond, and let's just do it the old way. The old way we would do it, or the way that you're used to doing it, um, when somebody just gives you a simple problem that says it's an 8% bond that matures in 10 years, yield to maturity is nine and a quarter percent. So let's just put that in. All right, let's assume the, the bond pays semi-annual interest. So we're going to have 20 periods here. So again, clear the time value of money worksheet. So we have 20 for N. The yield is nine and a quarter percent. So let's take 9.25 and divide it by two. And that's going to be our interest rate per period. Uh, it's an 8% coupon bond. So our payment is going to be what? Our payment is going to be $40 per year. And we're going to assume that you get back your full thousands, 100% redemption value as a face value. We compute the uh, price of the bond as nine hundred nineteen dollars and fifty seven cents now let's try and do this in the worksheet so if we call it the bond worksheet we want a re a settlement date of january thirty first two thousand and fifteen so i'm going to put in one dot thirty one fifteen and hit enter so i get january thirty first two thousand and fifteen we said the coupon is 8%. We're supposed to put it in as an annual coupon. The redemption date, we said, was January 31st of 2025. So 1.3125, enter. 100% redemption value. Okay, so you're going to get back the full $1,000 when the bond matures. Uh, we'll stay with just the actual day count, two coupons per year. The yield is 9.25. And we want to compute the price, and let's see if we get that, 9, 91.95. So this is doing it per $100 par value. So that's what we had before, nine, we had 9 nine hundred and nineteen dollars and fifty seven cents so if we just made it a hundred dollar par value it would be ninety one ninety five and if we scroll down here we can also see that the duration is six point two years so this is actually kind of a handy tool to have this um, this bond worksheet the tricky part is just sort of figuring out how to put in the redemption date. And it took me a while to sort of figure it out. I had to look through the manual. But it's, you know, I tried one dash. That didn't work very well. But it's one dot 31 and then 25. And then you hit enter. So this is a, a pretty handy tool. If you wanted to calculate duration by hand, it would take you um, quite a bit of time. I have a video tutorial showing you how to calculate duration and it's a it's a very useful thing to know. It gives us some information about how sensitive a bond's price is to a change in interest rates but it's also rather 
tedious to um, to compute. Okay, and here the financial calculator, particularly the bond worksheet, works rather nicely in doing the calculation.